Welcome to PC Jack. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at a cooler that isn't as quite high-end as some of the other coolers I've taken a look at on the channel over the last few months, but instead, more of a budget-friendly option. And by budget-friendly, I mean one of the cheapest coolers that you can actually buy right now on Amazon at a price of £25 as of the time of filming. The cooler in question being the Vetro V5. This is a 120mm CPU air cooler with a 150W TDP, which means it's sort of aimed at more entry-level systems. I've been really keen to take a look at this cooler for quite some time now, and thought it would make for an interesting change for some of the other ones that we've taken a look at on the channel so far. If you're looking to change out your stock cooler, then maybe this is a good option. Let's get into it and see exactly how much this cooler can actually handle. The Vetro V5 is an entry-level CPU cooler coming in at £25 as of the time of filming. The cooler features 5 6mm copper heat pipes with direct contact and 0.4mm thick aluminium fins to help dissipate heat. The cooler is compatible with multiple sockets from both AMD and Intel including AM4 and LGA1200. Mounting the cooler is pretty straightforward and for the AMD mounting process it simply screws straight into your motherboard's AM4 backplate or instead for Intel it uses the included Intel backplate which can be adjusted depending on the socket type. I'll also be uploading a dedicated AM4 installation tutorial very soon, so make sure you subscribe for when it goes live. Included with the cooler is a 120mm PWM fan with an addressable RGB connector. And you also have the option of either an all black or white design to suit your build. So while this cooler has been getting quite a lot of attention online, I wanted to see exactly how much this cooler can actually handle. Additionally, I also wanted to see how much it compares to something a little less budget friendly and see whether the additional investment is actually worth it in terms of performance. So in today's testing, I've also used the Noctua NH212S Redux, which is fairly comparable in design. But really, this is one of the closest designed coolers that I have to the Vitro V5, so it should provide a, an interesting comparison between the two. For today's testing, I've used a Ryzen 5 5600X running at stock PBO settings, with the exception of ASUS Multicore Enhancement enabled. Using these settings pushes our 5600X to around 4.5GHz and provides 115 watts of power to dissipate. So using these settings I've run multi-core stress tests to test the cooler's performance at both 50% fan speed and 100% fan speed. So this should allow us to look at temperatures and noise levels and compare them directly with Noctua's NH212S Redux. So first, let's take a look at temperatures. While we didn't encounter any thermal throttling and maintained 4.5GHz for the duration of the test, the Vetro V5 was cutting it pretty close with a maximum of 86.1C, but averaging around 85C. Even pushing our fan speed to maximum at 1700 RPM barely made any difference with the exception of our noise levels. At 50% fan speed, we can see that we hit 39.7 decibels, which admittedly is pretty respectable. But 100% fan speed gave us 51.2 decibels, which is going to be obnoxiously loud to run at for most users. For this kind of workload, I really wouldn't actually be that comfortable running it with the Vetro V5. As you can see, it is cutting it really close and is near in TJ Maxx. Honestly, I'm quite surprised by how different the results were compared to the NH212S Redux, but clearly it's just a more efficient design on Noctua's end. However, this does come at 72% more in cost as the NH212S Redux as of the time of filming is being sold for £43. So does today's test mean that I wouldn't recommend the Vetro V5? Well, it depends. If I'm being totally honest, I've run this cooler at its absolute limit with the 5600X, and while the 5600X is a fairly modest CPU with a 65W TP, it doesn't really tend to stick around that, and it can exceed that and does require a decent thermal solution. So, I'm not surprised that this cooler has struggled to keep up. But under a more forgiving workload such as gaming, where your CPU isn't actually being utilised as heavily as say your graphics card, I wouldn't really have any problems with using it in that scenario. Where I would recommend this cooler is with any less firmly demanding CPUs, and maybe you just want to ditch that AMD Wraith Stealth or Intel Stock Cooler and go for something that looks a bit smarter. As the added bonus value that I haven't really mentioned much about is obviously going to be its RGB fan. It's obviously not going to outperform a stock cooler much, but if you manage your expectations and don't assume that you're going to be running any insane or core overclocks with this cooler, then I think this is probably the right option for you. All in all, it's actually quite refreshing to see a budget-friendly CPU air cooler that doesn't look as cheap as it actually is. Admittedly, it does actually look quite nice with its all-black design and RGB, so it could actually help if you wanted to customise or bling out your system a little bit without breaking the bank. But don't treat it like it's better than it actually is, otherwise you'll get burned. So that's it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts on the Vetro V5 down in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.